Hallelujah. Somebody make a Holy Ghost crazy noise. I can't hear you. Make a Holy Ghost crazy. There is only one true God. He alone is God. He's seated upon the throne with all power in his hand. Somebody give Jesus Christ the best praise you have. Give it to Jesus. The Father never give him a prophetic high five. God is a good God. We have come to celebrate him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you lift your hand as we worship him? Father, we thank you for your God. Yes, Beside Lord. you, there is no God. Amen. We have come, O oh Lord, to bow before you. To be all glory, all praise, all honor, now and ever. Amen. We recognize that uh, you are the king of glory, the Lord of lords. The Alpha and the Omega. Mm. The beginning and the end. Yes, Lord, we pray you bless us. Mm. Bless us, O oh God, those who are present in the main auditorium, those who are in the extension, those who are in the basement, those who are in the overflows, those who may be watching us live. I pray, God, that you do us good. In Jesus' name I pray. And together we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. I want you to please have a seat. We are going through a moment to listen to what God has to say to all of us. Uh, I want to seize this moment again to greet all of you saints. It is just awesome to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are watching us live from wherever you may be, may God bless you. It is a joy to be live on uh, TV Africa in Ghana, in DSTV. I greet all of you Lord in Ghana Jesus. and uh, around. No, may the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday we had an encounter here. And uh, over 4,000 of us came here. It was just amazing. God touched us. God blessed us. We had deliverances. Sotero, <laughs> and uh, we, we had the, a massive flow of the Holy Spirit. Great oh, number Jesus. of men and women spoke in tongues for the very first time. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. It is literally a revolution. Somebody say a revolution. A revolution. How many of you were here for the encounter? I just love what God is doing. Now, again, I want to emphasize that we are in that season. This is a special month for us. It's a month of October. In this month, we host our annual conference. This time, it is a full week. It begins from the 22nd down to the 28th. I want you to gear yourself up. It will be a moment to remember. We have great men and women of God from uh, out of this country that uh, will be here to bless us. So I want you to make it as your appointment. And exciting news is that on the Saturday, the 27th, we'll have a march. Some of you marched for everything, but you've never marched for God. <clears throat> I'm referring to the toy toy that uh, we love doing. Now, we will march for Christ. We will march for Christ. We are not marching to revendicate anything. We're marching to establish the will of God. Amen. We are marching, and our march is a prayer. We are saying to God, heal our Amen. land. It is the responsibility of the church to pray. It's not our responsibility to keep on sitting and watching. No, we have a part. The Bible says, if my people mm. who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek them my face and turn from the wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven, forgive their sins, 
and heal the land. the land. Last year, already God began to uh, push us in this direction. And uh, from last year, we said that uh, this time will I have a march that I will bring healing. Heal our land. Amen. You have to be part of this. You have to be part of this. We'll march all of us here. And I promise you, if you, you, you do not go to a gym, come. We'll march. It's a gymming exercise for some people, you know. It will also be a weight loss exercise uh, for some people. You, you'll we'll lose a few pounds uh, as you watch. Some of you, you have consolidated your packs. When you go back walking, when God is healing the land, is also fixing the stomach. I receive. Hallelujah. So make sure that uh, you are <clears throat> here and God will just glorify his name. Are we together? Amen. Now I want you to please just lift your hand. His name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel. While you have your hands up, I want you to know that is Emmanuel is here for you. We are not here alone. Wherever you may be, I want you to know he is right there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I shall be with you every day till the end of time. You may be here and you feel alone. You feel like a, it is too heavy what you carry. But let me tell you today, his name is Emmanuel. Oh God. He is here. He's here. And he's here for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory for being here. Right now, Lord, I pray that uh, you use my mouth, use me as an instrument. Jesus. Speak to your people, oh God, and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, it is my intention to be composed and uh, present to you the word of God without too, uh, too much jumping. I want to try my best, if I can, to remain right here in this vicinity. This is the day, this morning, my space, because I, I don't just want you to jump, I want you to receive. I, I, want, I want you to receive. I share with you what the Lord has placed in my spirit, and I believe that uh, this will change your life and will help you to move from where you are right now to where you are ought to be. I receive it. I sense in the Holy Ghost that there is a transition taking place. Glory to Jesus. Family, I want to let you know that where you are is not your final destination. Amen. Touch somebody say, I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. Where you are right now is not where he had destined you to be. You are just passing through. <laughs> Now, if somebody who is mocking you understand that uh, you are just passing through before he concludes your life, uh, he will think twice. Uh, because I believe in God that the you we see today will not be the you we will see tomorrow. I Something it. big is about to happen to somebody. I, I just don't know who is here who has been praying. I don't know who is here who has been trusting God. But I am prophetically declaring acceleration to the transition process of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Please have a seat. If you can. There is a transition. 
So in this transition, I pray that you may have the word of God. Family, please understand that there is nothing that is greater than the word. Amen. The demonstration of the power of God is diabolical if it's not based on the word of God. Right. Meaning this, the spiritual realm where God dwells is ruled by his word. Mm -hmm. He has exalted his own words above his name. Right. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Mm -hmm. And the word was God. Mm -hmm. The Bible say, may this word, talking about the word of God, abide in you now family to abide means to dwell permanently we speak about abiding when it is a, a stay may this word abide dwell permanently in you Amen. you gotta be so full of the word that when the devil shows up your way you tell him it is written Amen. Ah, you will have your way through the word i, I say you will have your way through the word i say again you will have your way through, through the, the word. word those who have the word have god mm. because god is in his word and his word is god your miracle that thing you are seeking god for is wrapped in the word if you can get the word you will get your miracle I, I don't know who I'm speaking to but there is a word for you today this I word will change your life I this word is about to take you from where you are I to the next it. level uh, since a transition I who is he that he has been expecting God to go to the next level nothing will remain the same in your in life Jesus name a transition uh, from poverty to prosperity Amen. from sickness to divine healing from low to high from see. being cursed to being blessed somebody see. holla i'm blessed i'm blessed glory to jesus uh, please have a seat i want to be an instrument that to present to you this morning the word of God and if you will be a recipient for this word I pray that this word may not just inform you but may this way transform you Amen. somebody say Lord Lord through the power of your word through the power of your word transform my life transform my life the Lord began to minister to me on what I'm sharing this morning and I'll try to remain on the path of the Lord, not only as I deliver the word today, but even as the Lord will open another opportunity in the future. This is to emphasize on what God, through the Spirit, is saying to the church of God. Amen. If you have your Bible, please read with me from the second book of Timothy, chapter Three, we'll read from verse 1 down to verse 5. Thank God we have it on the screen. At the count of three, join me as we read 1, 2, and 3. From such people, turn away. There are people you have to turn away from. Amen. Don't make everybody your friend. I receive. Don't journey with just everybody. If you gotta survive, you have to be picky. That's right. If you have to make it, you gotta be picky. 
not everybody should enter your inner circle there must be a circle where before the person access he has to get a password that's right unless you know the password we remain comrades i love you from where you are Amen. we greet each other every time we face each other but there is no hugging between you and I. I there is no kissing between you and I. I you are my brother, but from there, you are my sister. From there, the Bible say, from such people, turn away. Some of us, the greatest curse we have is because we have embraced him. That's right. And on the other side, you have embraced her. You must know that God can only bless you through people. Right. Every time God is getting ready to bless you, he will raise people in your lives. So there are people who carry the connection to your miracle. You see, every time God begins to do a new thing in your life, he will connect you through new people. That's right. As God brings new people in your life, oftentimes it's because he's trying to bless you. And those people are God's conduit. For your blessing. But you must also understand that the devil destroys you also through people. Right. Uh -huh. The devil will mess you up through somebody you know. Those you love. Those you call comrades. Brothers. Friends. Colleagues. Partners. And sometimes spouses. The devil will mess you up. That's why it is very important to know who is he that is in your yard. Identify yourself, mister. What is your agenda in my circle? What are you after? Who has mandated you? Who brought you near me? Because you see, the discernment of the Holy Ghost in knowing who is he that is next to you will help you align better for your destiny. Right. Sometimes we have thrown away the people God has sent to bless us. And we have embraced the people the enemy has mandated against us. May every fake, en fake friend fall before you. In Jesus' name. May every deceiver in your yard be rooted out. In Jesus' name. May every enemy disguised as a friend be exposed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I put trouble in your yard? Amen. I say, can I put trouble in your yard? Yes, you may. You got to understand that I'm not here to play cheeky cheeky. I have been anointed by the almighty God to hold your head to the place of victory. Can I put fire in your yard? Amen. I decree and I declare from midnight to night, every enemy of your progress coming in your yard as your friend will receive the fire of God. Fire. Somebody help me holla fire. Fire. I can hear you say fire. Fire. Those who have been working against you, co-casting with the enemy to pull you down. They will begin to fall one by one. I, yeah, hey, I say one by. In Jesus uh, name. Your family will not be the same again. I, I am giving the traitors 24 hours of repentance. I, in Jesus name. After 24 hours, fire. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be, it cannot be otherwise. Amen. I say it cannot be otherwise. Amen. Jesus. Now, as we all take a deep breath and please have a seat, I had said earlier on, I am trying, trying to have you seated as I present to you the word of God. Second Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 1, down to verse 5, the Bible reads, But know this. It is as one who's presenting something established. He's not just uh, suggesting certain stuff. He's presenting fact. He's presenting something that uh, you should not just pound about, but something that uh, you should know. You see, 
If there are two or three things that are in this season, I want you to know, I want you to know this. Knowing this is pointing toward a certain direction. And that this is not written only to one person, it is written to all of us for the benefit of whoever has an ear to hear. He say, know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. In the last days, he's talking about not the last days of your marriage, not only the last days of your life, but the last days of humanity. For it is well believed and uh, well documented in the scripture that uh, everything we see has an end. And family, according to the evidence given to us in the scriptures, we all are now convinced that uh, we are at the end of time. When Paul was speaking, we can see that he had believed that uh, he lived in the last days. Now, if in the times of Paul, he had believed that he lived in the last days, how much more our time? You know, when you read carefully the scriptures, when Paul is speaking about the rapture, he's putting himself up uh, uh, in, the, in the group of those who will be raptured alive. He say, at the sound of the trumpet and so forth, he say, those who are dead in Christ will arise. And we the living is counting himself on the side of those who remain alive because something is bubbling in the atmosphere mm -hmm. we are in the last days now if it was a reality and possibility yesterday how much more us now Amen. family your car your house your relationship, the wardrobe that you so dear will not go with you to the other side. That's right. There is an end, mm. and the end will affect everything, whatever you have. So he's speaking about that end, the end of time, when Jesus Christ will come, when judgment will come on the earth. He say, among the signs of the last days, among the signs of the end of time, he began to list. He said, men will be lovers of themselves. Now, if uh, earlier on, while I was speaking to you about the end, you had some doubt that uh, we are not at the end. We may be somewhere in the middle, in the middle of time. Now, I want you to pay attention because as I begin to read what is listed in the scripture, it will become clearer and the evidence to you too. That uh, indeed we are in the last days. He said, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying. I receive it. You got to learn to say bye-bye. Right. May God give you the anointing of delete. There are people that you have to delete. That's right. Uh -huh. There are numbers you have to delete. There are addresses you have to delete. There are some habits you have to delete. That's right. In the name oh, of Jesus. Jesus. Now he's in the last days. Men will be lovers of themselves. Family, everything that is written in the scripture is indeed inspired by the Holy Spirit. The exactitude and the accuracy of what we are seeing today, linking it to the scripture, is mind-blowing. We are living in a time where there is no balance. In a time where everything is breaking down. And all this is because the heart of man has turned dark. 
more than ever those who have been created in God's image in God's likeness to stand as a reflection of his glory have missed the point today we stand for self our ego is so high that anybody who want to go up will step on your toes step on your shoulders on your head as long as i get where i want to get what goes with you doesn't matter we are living in the time family where the greatest enemy of our time is not the devil is ourselves we all know that there are three enemies that we have to always be careful of and the first one has always been listed as the devil and the second one was listed as a system of the world. And the third has always been yourself. But today, the devil is sitting back with a remote control because you can do the job yourself. He has put mankind in autopilot and that today we are self-destructing. People who come to church get destroyed right in the house of God. People in the church of God who are supposed to help others find a good time in the house of God, a good place of worship are the people being destroyed, destroying others. Why? Because the devil has placed a system that is uh, working for his good today i pray that god may bring rectification in the body of christ of changing Jesus. all of us and putting us where we ought to be amen you see men will be lovers of themselves don't we just love ourselves you see the level of selfishness that is seen today across the globe in every arena of life derived from the self-love that we have cultivated over the years you gotta be applauded or else you feel undermined unless the pastor mentions your name you do not feel accepted mm. everywhere you go unless they lay down the red carpet you feel insulted there are people today unless you mention the name with the title that they believe is due to them they feel that you have disrespected them when you call them mr kumalo the person says that i'm not mr kumalo as i am dr reverend professor kumalo <laughs> this is how we love ourselves the day you were born you were not doctor that's uh, right reverend professor kumalo you were just kumalo now calling you kumalo today hurts your feelings mm. we love ourselves today that uh, you don't dare me i will show you who i am right in the church of god we hurt each other simply because there are people that think that uh, the world revolves around them right it is my way or the highway please quickly with high speed go to the highway because from people like you we turn away amen are you hearing me it is my way or the highway we are so egocentric that we think that everything has to stop for us mm. have you seen me did you know that i am the one behind one two three it is all about you listen to me your shoulders should be cool and down Amen. some people walk yes, with yes. their shoulder too high that's right cool down look at somebody say cool down cool down you see we love ourselves so much that we will sacrifice literally anybody we will step on anybody's toes just to have our way and that this is not only in the world but it is also seen in the church of god and that this is heartbreaking may god help me never put myself first as a servant of the living god may god by his grace help me to put myself last Jesus, because you yeah. gotta understand we are only instrument that's right 
instrument in the hand of God. God could use anybody. Mm. He can use anybody. If he has chosen to use you, it's by grace. You should be thankful. You should say, oh God, I thank you for remembering me. Are you hearing me? Men will be so lovers of themselves. In the last days, you look at it today, everywhere you go, people want to be applauded. People want to show off. When you come to church, you want to be recognized. You want a special seat. You want uh, uh, somebody to carry your Bible. You want liar. somebody to applaud you. It stops now. In Jesus' name. I say it stops In the name now. of Jesus. Life does not revolve. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are. We come to serve God. Amen. You see, we love ourselves. Who told you you are Miss Universe? I, I know you look good. I know you walk good. I know you dress well. I know you smell well. But I have news for you. You know Miss Universe. At cool all. down. Amen. You see, I came to realize in life, you do not put yourself in competition That's right. because you will always find that there is one who is just a little bit better than you. That's right. No matter what you do, I know you preach well, but there is one somewhere who preaches just a little bit better That's right. than you. So if you feel comforted by the fact that uh, you preach and they scream mm. and you feel like uh, I rule here, the day you meet the one, they scream louder for You'll feel like killing somebody. I gotta murder somebody. Tell me if you have a gun. I gotta borrow your gun. I need to shoot down somebody. You see, all that is because we love ourselves. That's true. You gotta see uh, uh, how many times we invest on the mirror before we go out. We make sure that uh, we inspect everything in us. The ears, the eyes. We... We, <laughs> sometimes the investment is too high you spend in the presence of God 10 minutes and you feel you're a prayer warrior but when you sit in front of the mirror uh, 4 hours if you're married your husband is late he's saying baby please wait those who wait on the Lord they shall be strong they shall renew the strength. Why? Because you got to invest in you. This is life. You see people walking, you can realize that, yo, is this a queen? Is this a king? Oh yeah, I may not be a king in the kingdom that you know, but you see in my own head, I'm a king. When I walk, it's like, everything has to stop. <laughs> and uh, it's so disgusting because a person may not even know that uh, his walk is really stinking, but... The, 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 this is us. the disease of the last days. That's right. The disease of the last days. And due to this family, there are many men and women anointed by God. Like me, I speak with great humility and respect to all of us in the body of Christ. But sometimes we miss the point. Instead of thinking that we are servant, we start thinking that we are here to be served. That's right. That's right. Help us, Lord. You, my friend, if you a yes man, if you agree with everything I do, good or bad, you, my friend, if I see that you do not accept what I do, I run away from you. I used to have this dear friend of mine, and I started running away from him. Why? Because it seemed like he was anointed to rebuke me. He rebuked me. He rebuked me more than my mom. Anybody. So much so that I was running away from him. He loved me so much that one day I said, from now on, start loving me a little less. Because you see, he will always put me where I'm supposed to be. And I went to pray and I said, Lord, this man. I don't know, the devil is using him to take away my joy. God said, no, I have anointed him to help you. 
Glory to Jesus. He was for me a bitter pill. But you see, I learned a lot. He was a friend. He was not above me. He was not somebody I was submitting to. But you see, I had to pull myself a little down, love myself a little less to accommodate what was coming from him. Naturally, we love ourselves so much that uh, you want to be around people who applaud you even when they do not mean it. Or else it will be trouble. Do I look nice? They say, hey. Yes. <laughs> You see, they, they wanted to say that uh, this is ridiculous. You can't mix it that way. But because you see, you will take it personal. That's right. In these last days, to avoid trouble, they say, wow, you're killing it, girl. Huh? <laughs> you see, in the last day, men will be lovers of themselves. And he carried on saying, there will be lovers of money. Family, money is a medium of exchange. Money is for all of us to have. The resources that God has made available are here to help us achieve and fulfill our divine assignment on earth. Without money, you will not be able to achieve that which God set for you to do. Money helps you be the best you can be. If you are a giver, money helps you be a better giver. Money helps you be a good husband if you have it. Money helps you be a good father if you have it. It pulls and empowers you to do more in what you've been doing and to be more in what you are already. If you are a robber with money, you rob more. If you are an adulterous man with money, it will go worse because money enhances everything you have. Money is not evil. Money is good. Money is for you. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It is believed that money is a good servant. It is just a bad master. That's what the Bible says. You got to be careful. Don't be ruled by money. Rule money. Are you hearing me? Today I pray for a special grace upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Money will run to you. Money will work for you. Money will locate you. Money will come to you. Money will multiply in your hand. Who am I talking to? I receive it. Somebody, you will not be broke another day. I receive. May I stand here and destroy the works of the enemy that has been pulling you down. I say from today, you will not be broke another day. I receive. You. Lift your hand and say, money come. Money come. Some of you already just saying that you feel like you have seen the accord money. Oh my God, accord money. Money is given to you by God. And Amen. God want to give you even more. I because you see, see, to leave your home to go to school, you will need to pay how train. You will need to pay for fuel. You will not go for free. You need money to sustain your lifestyle. You need money to help you be a good man. Are you hearing me? Amen. It helps you fulfill your responsibility. So money is not bad. Oh, well, you got no speak about money. Money, money is too bad. In fact, when you're speaking about money, you won't eat. It is greed. Family, I have not seen a place where you go and pick. When you go to a shop, you go, you pick and Hey. There is no pick and go. Have you ever seen a pick and go shop? No. Glory to Jesus. From today, may you have abundance in the name of Jesus. I receive it. May you be in plenty in the name of Jesus. I receive. I speak grace of abundance over you I in the name it. of Jesus. 
before this year is over you will dance and celebrate God for all that he will do for you I receive it please have a seat understand that the Bible says in the last days men will be one lovers of themselves two they will be lovers of money now money by itself is not evil but the Bible in black and white teaches us that the love of money is the root of certain evil mm -hmm. I say again the Bible says that uh, the love of money is the root of certain evil only no the Bible says the love of money is the root of oh. all evil. A double L means that uh, it includes all evil. It excludes none. Every evil has found its root, its link to not money, but the love of it. Right. For money in our generation, people will sell you. Mm -hmm. Right. They will sell your mother and they will sell your children. For the love of money, people will manipulate you. Mm -hmm. For the love of money, the extent your friends that you trust today will go. It is uh, mind-blowing. In our time, the love of money, dinero. Mm -hmm. we, we so desire it that people will kill one another just to have it and he said in the last days more than before the attachment and uh, the, the 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 attraction to money will be beyond understanding today there are men and women who stands with uh, bibles and microphones but all they try to do is get some dollars mm. when we began ministry i say to god bless me that I may in no way fall in the trap of how much can I get. And I began to work. And I had a job, a normal job like everybody. While in ministry, ministry was growing and I had a job and I was in business. And the reason why I was doing so was because I knew that there is a trap in ministry. The needs in ministry sometimes are overwhelming. That are, if you are not steady, you will lose balance. And in losing balance, you will be a pocket uh, 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 attacker. I was looking for a better term. A pocket attacker is somebody who will preach your pocket. Whatever he's saying is checking your pocket. How much can I get from this pocket? How heavy is this pocket? Yeah. And that this may affect the way you approach people. You love certain people and you despise others. And all this is linked to how much you can get. I am free from that. I love you having or not having. Because I don't depend on what you give me. I am well by myself. I, say, I, say, I, gotta, I, I, I gotta say it again. I am well by myself. Even if I do not have as much as you have, but let me tell you, there will always be bread on my table. Are you hearing me? Amen. In the last days, we'll become lovers of money. We'll choose our friends based on how we can get. There are people next to you. They say all the good things, not because they love you. They just love your wallet. That's right. <laughs> Terrible. You must ask yourself, over your friend without my wallet is he still gonna be around True. let me tell you if you lose your wallet today you'll lose most of them <laughs> you gotta understand for your wallet they will polish your shoes yeah. for your wallet they will marry you don't play that marry you just for your wallet. <laughs> I present to you, family, marriage is not for financial gain. Marriage That's is right. not for financial breakthrough. I'm looking for breakthrough. Ramakoto ye tata. Hey, I found a way. God help us. In the last days, men will be lovers. 
Now, family, when they say lovers, you're not just lacking it. You desire it. You think of it. You want it. You want it. Money. When the pastor is preaching about sin, you are sleeping. When you just say that in the next seven seconds, somebody is receiving a financial breakthrough. That's me. I receive. You're so driven by money. Your greatest trap is money. You love money. You, you just love it. Ah. God help us. What shall I say? Out to the Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Oh God. What shall I say? Unto the Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say. Is thank you. Here it is. Thank you, Lord. Money. Mm. I, I want you to go with me. How much? You did not finish talking. I want you to go with me. It's already how much? <laughs> what is it in it for me? That's right. What am I gaining out of it? Mm. I won't sing in your choir unless you tell me how much. Hey. Unless I know how much I'm getting, forget my services in the house of God. If you serve God based on how much you get, your reward is already given. For your effort here, you are paid already. There is nothing in heaven. I paid you already. Money. People will kill for it. They will accept or reject you based on that. Yeah. That's right. The world has become so materialistic that we choose our friends based on our gain. Mm -hmm. Please have a seat. You got to understand what the Spirit of God is saying. Ooh. In the last days, we will become lovers of money. We are living in such a materialistic world that materialism has taken the mind of even those in the house of God. By saying this, I am careful not to be uh, uh, taken as those who shoot everything you can have. I don't stand and vindicate poverty. Poverty is a curse. 100%. There is nothing good in poverty. At all. You should not identify yourself in poverty. Amen. For you must understand, poverty will steal your dignity. Yeah. Do you know how many people die simply because of poverty? Not because they have not eaten. There are diseases that can be prevented. But simply because of poverty, they are vulnerable. I will never be a preacher that speaks and stands to vindicate the cause of poverty. Are you hearing me? Amen. Somebody told me I don't like those prosperity preachers. And he said, are you a prosperity preacher? I said, I'm not a poverty preacher. <laughs> and family, I'm not shy to say that. Because there is nothing good in poverty. That's Many old. of us did not have an opportunity. I'm talking about our communities and masses. An opportunity and access to education. Not because we had weak wills. Mm. It was not because we did not want to have. It was because of poverty. Poverty will deny you your future. Right. Family, there is nothing good with poverty. Nothing. Jesus Christ came to preach or to proclaim good news to the poor. Right. Are you hearing me? Now, what was the good news to the poor? The good news to the poor is that you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. The Bible says he became poor on the cross of Calvary so that we may become rich. rich. Somebody say, I am rich in God. I am rich in God. You see, it is politically correct to say you're poor and to play poor. 
you walk in a certain way because they'll think that you're taking the money. To be a politician is difficult. Your own car, they say it's theirs. Me is my car. You don't pay me. No one pays me in this church. No one ever paid me. Are you hearing? I don't have an income in this church. I never had. Glory to Jesus. If Hallelujah Ministries have to pay me, how much will you pay me? Tell me, how much will you pay me? A million rand? Five million rand? You're joking. Are you hearing me? So I'm here to say to you, family, that in the last day, people will be lovers of money. But what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to push you in a place where you begin to think and accept that being poor is godly. There is no godliness in poverty. Amen. Poverty stinks. Now, what should be our attitude toward poverty? Is to insult those who are poor? No. It is to be their strength. To help them out of poverty. And poverty has to be fought in families, in communities, in government. Every one of us have to fight poverty. That's right. Are you hearing me? Join the government in fighting poverty. Start with your children. Begin to tell them, you have to arise. You must not just be a consumer. Be a producer. Because as you grow in this way, you'll be able to help yourself and help others. Are you listening to me? Amen. We are living in a world that is so materialistic that those even that are supposed to receive from God can no longer receive because God will not waste resources in the hand of those who will take for themselves only. Family materialism has nothing to do with you having material things. Materialism has nothing to do with you having seven cows. I pray that you may have more than seven cows. I receive. It has nothing to do with materialism. I it. Materialism is not you wearing the best perfume. Oh, well, because you have the best perfume, you are so materialistic. No. The simplest dictionary says that... Uh, Materialism is a tendency to consider material possession and physical comfort as more important than spiritual values. And that this definition is not even found in the Christian dictionary. I'm talking about a secular dictionary says that materialism is a tendency to consider material possession and physical comfort as more important than spiritual values. Meaning when we talk about materialism, we are linking or speaking of a certain attitude. is a tendency. If all I see is my microphone and I hold my microphone higher than any spiritual value, then it becomes a problem. When because of what you can get today, you, you are able to insult your parent simply because now you live in Centon. You do not understand the pain they had gone through in bringing you up those days under that one roof house. Jesus. But because now you have it, you have married a good man, you have married a good wife, you are turning your back on those who were there for you. In the bracket, if your spouse does not like your family, think again. Right. materialism has taken all of us in the church we choose churches based on the screens based on how things are well done we look for comfort first before looking for spirituality that is materialism we're living in a world where we want to amass, we want to store, we want to have. We think that our identity is linked to what we drive. Our identity is linked to what we wear. Our identity is linked to the house we live in. We are based on whatever we have can undermine literally everybody. I came from a church where my spiritual father taught us that it doesn't matter 
whether you have it all or you do not have it all, when you come to the house of God, you are just a child of God. Amen. There is no VVIP in the house of God. Amen. We are all children of God. In my, 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 the church I came from, the vice president will come regular. We had the ministers, the prime ministers, they will all come regular and they will be everywhere, even in the overflow. You, with a 2,300 salary, you want to be the VVIP. Nothing else matters but you. Fire on you. Fire. Materialism has taken us. You see, the reason why the church of God is so weak today is because of this. We all want to have so much so that the giving becomes a problem. I love my money so much. I want to hold on to it. That giving becomes a problem. When we come to church, unless you are taught that if you give now, you are about to get seven times tomorrow, you won't give. Because you see, after hearing that the giving now gives you access to seven times more, that giving is not giving. It's a deal. We are so individualistic because of this mind. What is mine is mine. I share with nobody. It's all mine. You can be in the house of God. Sit on the plastic chain. It is okay. In your house. Is there a plastic chain in your sitting room? Mm -mm. You have sofas. Very expensive sofas. That you are lay by or you lay by. <laughs> but for the house of God, is okay. It's not yours because you see, you want to have the best for you. It's all about you. You came for God. You are doing this. It's hot in your church. No air con. You are sweating. Oh Lord, uh, I miss winter. Buy air con. Which winter you miss? You see, you can't do that because you see, I have only one million. If I remove 10,000, it's no longer one million. I, I find my identity in what I have so much that I won't let go of anything. You put God last because you see, your material things comes first. I tell you two things that uh, happened that shocked me, but it happened. I prayed for a certain man whose wife had womb cancer. And uh, he told me what they had gone through, how much they had spent. And they had to go for medical treatment in Brazil. And he said the budget was about $35,000. I speak under correction, but I think it was about $35,000 to take the wife after everything they spent already. To go to Brazil, 35,000. They were here in South Africa, just on transit. I prayed. I say, the Lord will heal your wife. The wife received a healing. We all thank God and we moved. A week passed. Two weeks passed. I was in Lindus on the stage. I see this woman and man coming dancing. The woman could not walk. Coming dancing with an offering. And as they dropped the offering, the Lord spoke to me. He said, that disease will kill this woman. I said, why? He said, they were able to give doctors hundreds of thousands of dollars. They have a budget of $35,000 for health to men that cannot help them. I have helped them. The first offering, I didn't even notice that. The first offering was the offering they were giving after two weeks. And it was an insult to heaven. Mm. Now, is it because God is broke? No. Is it because God is concerned about money? No. Your giving reflects the state of your heart. Amen. 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 
Your giving reflect the state of your heart. And God say that disease, the disease that left, he said, will kill this woman. I have not seen them ever since. But I can tell you, I don't think she's alive. Not because God did not heal, but because you see, materialism, we want to have, instead of recognizing God above our revenues and our wealth, we take our wealth higher than God. When we approach God, is to use him to amass even more. We do not recognize him. The Bible says you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. So, because it is he that gives you power to get wealth, the Bible says you should remember the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Sometime back, I had a politician who came to, to see me. And this man said that for close to uh, a good period of time, I was trying to get in touch with you, men of God. And I tried to call the lines, and it was not going through. And now that I have you here, I want to let you know that God spoke to me, that you will help me for the next election. I want to be so-and-so in the government. So, okay, I'm listening. And the person said to me, I had a, 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 a budget of close to $4 million. And in the budget I had, I had spent about $1.2 to $1.4 million on entertainment. Meaning they had to go from place to place to do the campaign, to run the campaign. And as they go there, it will bring the best musicians. They will sing, they will... It covered every way. He spent a lot of money. And he said, man of God, I know that no matter what I have done, unless you speak in my life, you prophesy and declare a word from God, it, is not, it will not be done. So, you are the key I need. I say, well, I'm here. I'll pray for you. I prayed for him. He was down. He stood. I had him. And I said, the Lord be with you. Before leaving, he puts a uh, pocket, I mean, hand in his pocket, pull a small uh, certain envelope and dropped it in front of me. And he said, man of God, I want to seal the prayers. And he left. Before he left, family, I have my hand up. I did not notice it. Whatever he did, that is his. Whatever it dropped in my office. He lift, I lift my hand to tell you this. When he left, the Lord spoke to me. He said, this man will never make it. He will not win the election. He will never occupy any significant position in his life ever again. He's over 65. He killed his career. Now, the question is, why God? I prayed for him. I said to him, it is well. Go. The Lord, my God, is with you. And God refused to go. <laughs> and God told me, I had given him an opportunity to stay, to seal what he had called heaven for. I brought him in front of you, my servant, that he may seal it. He spent 1.4 million in entertainment and he gave God $700. Men of God. <laughs> Because the Bible says you don't see a man of God empty-handed. I bless you. As you see $700 here. <laughs> yeah. Don't bless me. Bless God. I ah, bless you. I bless you. Bless me. With $700. Oh, well, I'm not trying to raise funds. I'm just making you comfortable. Making you. Are you hearing me? Now, I ask God. Lord, why? Have mercy. Lord, maybe after. Maybe once he has the position, the guy say, this is not the first time. Oh gosh. Meaning this, whatever you have been doing was to use God for your own. You had taken God for a ride. Your offering is an insult to God. 
You love money so much. You want a breakthrough for nothing. Your love revolves around how much you can get. Since you are in God, you have never done something significant for God. You're trying to do something significant for yourself. You're buying a second car, a third car. You're paying for your house. You are doing this. But what is it that you have done for God of value? Mm. You want everything from God. You want every blessing God has. You want every manifestation. But what is it that is meaningful that you have shown to God? Many of us have lost our blessing because of that. The love of money. Not only in the church, on the pulpit, but everywhere. On the pews. Out there. A gentleman met with me and I looked at him. I said, don't do it. And everybody who was next to me didn't understand why I said that. I said, don't do it. He froze and looked at me. He said, who are you? I said, don't you do it. He had the hand of the wife who carried the baby in his hand. But you see, that week, he was sacrificing the soul of the wife for money. The same week. But he had the wife in his hand. They were together. And because I can see in the spirit, I looked at him and said, don't do it. Who are you? The wife was there. Hey, who's this guy? Hey. Oh my God. Honey, out of the blue, he's saying, don't do it doesn't know that I'm here to rescue her. Are you hearing me? You want to kill this woman. Sacrifice her for ritual. Whoever wants to do that for you. Hiya. It will go back to himself in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. In the last days, men will be lovers of money. Lovers of money. You, you, we, we have hands that have eyes today in church. When you come to give God, that's where you know who loves God and who loves money. When you put your hand in your pocket, your hands develop eyes. You can see which one is 10 rand, which one is 20, which one is 200. No mistakes. 10 rand. It will always be 10 rand. The 20 rand the 50 rains, the uh, 100 rain, 200 rain, you will never catch it. <laughs> there will be boasters, proud, blasphemers. This is what we are seeing in the last days. Right. People are boasting. Pastors, today I'm, I'm, I'm troubled. I'm big because uh, I, 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 I don't want to boast over something. Have you seen me? Have you heard? We are so puffed up. You see, one of the greatest secrets of being used by God is humility. True. God will not use you for your glory, He will use you for His glory. Now, if you begin to tap, or to tap into his glory, taking his glory, he will stop using you. If God can trust you in using you, open the eyes of the blind, and is secure that you will not share his glory, he will do so. But oftentimes, God knows that we are so us, so full of us. They don't speak to me. They don't rebuke me. They don't correct me. Everything about me, it is okay. Who are you to speak to me? I am high. I am vice Jesus. Literally, Jesus is here, me, a vice Jesus. Who are you to speak to me? And he said, in the last days, men and women will boast. The Bible says, what is it, O oh man, that you did not receive? That's right. So why boast over it? Mm. And he said, men will become blasphemers. We open our mouth today to speak things we're supposed not to say. 
we speak against the anointing we speak against the anointed we speak against the house of god we speak against the things of god christian there are christian who say things against the men of god that uh, the devil himself will never dare say even the devil is going, eh? he shocked with you We are blasphemers. And he said, these are evidence of the last day. Children will be disobedient to their parents. Unthankful. Unholy. There is nothing that uh, drives me not than ungratefulness. Not only toward me, but when I see it among God's children. This brother helped you. You don't know how to say thank you. You think thank you will kill you. That's right. Ungrateful people. You see, in the last day, people will become ungrateful. Somebody gives you one because of uh, the sense of entitlement, you want more. Yeah. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm prophesying. I passed thousands of people, ten thousands of people to come to you. And I'm giving you a word. I give you a word for two minutes. Instead of ex being excited, you are disappointed because you wanted me to spend another five minutes. Next time I won't prophesy on you. <laughs> because of that sense of entitlement, you can't say thank you. You want more all the time. Mm -hmm. You're praying for people. We are hundreds of thousands of people sometimes. Or we are a thousand people standing. And you, one person has to lay hands. They laid hands on you. Bah, you move again. Bah. So you don't want anybody else. It's all about you. God help. You can't say, Lord, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. There is no thank you. You always want more. Mm. I met you only yesterday. We spoke once. You want me to speak to you every day. Amen. So if I speak to you every day, my children... What time I have? No, you did not speak to me yesterday, so I'm upset. Be upset. <laughs> and leave me alone. Leave my pastor alone. Some people will bully you. Unthankful. Unloving. Unforgiving. Mm. Slanderers. It's like uh, Paul or uh, uh, Timothy. Of slandering that we are seeing through social media it is mind-blowing everyone has something to say about everything and some people out there are exposing the ignorance they call you doctor for nothing because what is proceeding out of your mouth it is so disgraceful mm. slanderers you gotta pick on somebody some people go and sit down and look for who to pick, be it young or old, dead. And that this is what is happening. In churches, thank God for AMI. But in churches where this group will stand against that group, and that group will stand against this group, they are slandering each other. They always see things in the wrong way. I always say, as long as I will lead you right, I won't permit you to do that. No, no. Not only that. that, that no, 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 no. No. We all serve God in submission. Right. No, me, I have my views. Keep it there, not here. He is the house of God. We yeah. live in a certain way. That's right. From the pastor down all of us abide by the word if you do not abide by the word you are in a wrong church altogether it's not permitted here where well, there is a group of people that have a view against the other people no no it happens elsewhere not here amen there is no democracy in the church it is a theocratic government. It's a government of theo, meaning God. 
all of us, be it the pastor, the bishop, we all submit to him. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Men will have no self-control. They'll be brutal. Despisers of good. Traitors. Is there anybody who has been betrayed before? Oh, I'm not alone. <laughs> Traitors. And we are seeing it more and more. Mind who you bring in your yard. That's right. Very true. You got to learn to, to friends. Oh, gosh. Is it for me or not? I know well, when I'm speaking like that, it looks like I'm speaking tough. I'm not speaking tough. I'm just saying this word that I'm reading with you now. And this word, I'm not above it. I am under it. I need to submit to this word as all of us have to submit. And that these are the reality of the last days. And the Bible says, if we see people like this, we should turn away. We as children of God are meant to live in a certain way. And what guides us, what rules our lives is the word of God. None is above this word, including me, are worse than everybody. I need to be really, really under and be the reflection of what I try to communicate to people. I try my best to live by what I'm sharing with you so that all of us may be into it. Despisers of good. Traitors. Stubborn. Haughty. Haughty simply means that uh, you, you are in the level where you are disdainful. You are disdainful. You look at people. There are people who will give you a look from up down, down up. Mm -hmm. You think of committing suicide. <laughs> the level of disdain that they, 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 they throw to you, the, you go, mommy. <laughs> right in the house of God, someone will give you one word, one word. The supreme anointing of your father will miss you. You are under the supreme anointing, but the word you got, one word in the parking. When you sit in the church, you, you are lost already. Mm -hmm. The present worship is passing you. You're just thinking, hey, hey, hey. God help. Lovers of pleasure. Rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and but denying its power, pleasure comes and goes, mm -hmm. and that this is what we see. You see, we stand here. All we want is play, and when paying comes, becomes a problem. You go and mess up there because of pleasure. You are a slave of pleasure. You want pleasure. You come to church. You one person. You're not even handsome. You have seven relationships. My goodness. I don't just blame you. I blame them also. Who look beyond you to accept you. And they mess up. You must have some values. You embrace everybody. You want person. You want to be with this one. You, all that you, you are a slave of pleasure. You want to go with this one. You want to be with the other one. You want to be with the other one. In the house of God. Shame on you. Shame. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the it word. It is not acceptable. At all. And it cannot be. The house of God is not a house of debauch. Mm-hmm. It's not a house for sexual immorality. Amen. It's a house Preach, of Pastor. God. God is speaking. Now you, you became an agency to hook people. Mm. I, I found a good man for you. Hey, look at that brother. We came here to serve God for crying out loud. Amen. It is unfortunate, but this is happening not only in the pews, it's happening on the pulpit. 
That's right. It's happening on the pulpit. It's happening with all of us. Mm. Meaning ministers and pastors, doctors and bishops. It's true. Well, because in the last days, the Bible says, they, they will be into pleasure. Mm. They, will have, they will love pleasure more than God. You come to church, but are you you sniffing things before you come? Before the service, you. So when you come here, no matter what pastor say, you are happy with him. God help us. Everything is just a heaven. <laughs> Ooh! This is because before you walked in here, you, you, you took stuff. Pleasure. Thank you, Jesus. Lovers of pleasure. Mm. May God help us. Amen. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. This is religion. You see today, people who are killing you, they're killing you in the name of God. People are slandering you. Go on social media. They have titles. They slander others. But they have holy titles. Bishop, archbishop, pastor, spiritual chief. Having the form of godliness, the outside, but they forget its power. The power of godliness is in love. Mm. Amen. Family, the, without love, we are nothing. Amen. You see, if you are in love, you will know how to refrain. You will know how to embrace. You will know how to accept others. You will know how to tolerate others. You will know how to go an extra mile. But because our generation is loveless, we will stone you in the name of God. We will undermine your work. We do not even need to know who you are. We just say you are wrong. You're supposed not to be dressed like this. You're supposed to be like this. Okay, when he does it like this, say, no, 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 no. You went too far. You're supposed to come closer. And that these are the signs of the last days. Mm. The Bible says from such people, turn away. Mm. From lovers of themselves, turn away. Turn over. From lovers of money, turn, turn away. away. From boasters and proudful people, blasphemers, disobedient people, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unkind, slenders, turn away. From those who have no self-control, those who are brutal, those who despise as good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having form of godliness but denying its form, turn away from those people. And if you are already his people, to you I say, turn away from such practices. That's right. Receive this word. You receive it. Now let me tell you something. And as you receive this, we'll begin to pray. It is good to lift your hand to God and say, oh God, bless me. But the investment of God cannot go to waste. You must be a worthy recipient. God has no problem in giving you. The greatest challenge we have today is that uh, we are not worthy recipient. God will not bring more unto you so you may love yourself even more, so you may boast even more, so you may be puffed up even more, so that you may uh, slander others even more. Everyone that slanders uh, people on social media, from today, may you run out of data. Amen. Amen. 
you think that there is a devourer in your device. <laughs> you put data, it's gone. You put data, it's gone. You put data, is because you are a slenderer. If you are a worthy vessel, God will give you more. Family, listen to me. We need, the kingdom of God needs you to have this. But God will not, never afford to give it to you. Why? Because if he gives it to you, and it makes you bigger to yourself, it will lose you. So if you want to have this, and align with what the kingdom of God want to do, you must become a worthy recipient. I receive. Today I want to pray the grace of God upon all of you. But I want this word to remain in you. Mm. Live according to it. Amen. I am seeing people with papers showing their problems. I'm even wondering, should I prophesy or not? I think you got to hear the word sometime. You sit down, you hear it. Amen. Amen. We receive. My life is not my own. Jesus. Lift your hands and say, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. Your life should be given to God, family. Mm. Children of God live in a certain manner. You see, the misunderstanding of the message of grace gave us access to a sinful life, a disorganized life. Yes. We hurt each other and we say it's okay. Let me tell you, it is not okay. If God has to bless you, he want to see that you are a worthy vessel. I, I love giving this example. You see, it is easy, you know, for a preacher to say you got to trust God and it is key that you trust God. Is there anybody who trusts God here? We are meant to trust God even when we cannot trace him. There are times where you cannot trace him, but you have to trust God. Trusting God is walking by faith. But the greatest in trust is not that you trust God. It is that he trusts you. Amen. I am going to have a car in my house. And my little one says, Daddy, I want to go to school. Can I use your car? I said, you want to drive my car? Fire on you. Why? Because I don't trust him with my car. Mm -hmm. Do I love him? Yeah, I love him very much. So the reason why he's not driving my car is not because I am not loving him. It is not a love problem. In fact, because I love him the way I love him, I will never give him my car. Some of you, this is what is happening. The reason why you do not have access to certain things is not because God does not love you. In fact, he loves you more. That's why he's not giving it to you. Even when the pastor says, please give it to him, God says, I love this one too much to give. You know why? Because if I give my son my car, he starts the car, he will hurt himself. Mm. I will lose the car and I might lose him. It is a matter of trust. But if my child, seven years old, eight years old, or whatever the case may be, grows to a certain maturity mm. where he can handle the car, he won't be asking for it. Are you hearing me? Amen. All the time I ask, will you park my car on the other side? Will you do this with my car? Why? Because now I can trust him with my car. Receiving things from God goes with how much he trusts you, not how much you trust him. Amen. Does he trust you? Can God trust you with a million rain? Mm. If God gives you a million rain now, all that fills your heart is you. Because you're a lover of you. You want a new whole drop immediately. You want new shoes immediately. You want to pay all your debt immediately. You want to pay your house immediately. You want to buy a new car. It's all about you. So why is he going to give it to you? Have you thought of making space for God? Does God have any part in your life? Mm. 
Besides you saying hallelujah, Hosanna. Is there anything else? Lift your hands, say, Lord. Lord. I trust you. I trust you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To gain your trust. To gain your trust. Say, Lord. Lord. I trust you. I trust you. Help me today. Help me today. To gain your trust. To gain your trust. I want to trust you more. 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 Now, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. But I want our prayer to be a prayer of recommitment and cleansing. Many a times we have moved away from God. Church, we come for performance. I want to prophesy on you, but allow me to do it in the third service. I will not preach in the third service. I'll prophesy and I'll pray with you. Are you hearing me? But now I want this word, only this word, to stick in your spirit. Can we do that? Amen. Now, if you have strong knees, I want you on your knees. If you have weak knees, sit down. And if you think that you're too jumpy, stand up. Whatever the case may be, let us speak to God. Commit yourself. Recommit yourself to God. Move away from anything that you know that is not godly. You belong to God. Rekasaya. Yemato Robosha. Marabakosoto Rakatasete
Help us, Lord, serve you. Help us, Lord, be right with you. Help us stand rightfully before you. Amen. Lord, we cannot do it by ourselves. Mm. We need you. We need your grace. Yes, Cleanse us, O oh God. Jesus. Purify us, O oh God. Jesus, Draw us close to you. Amen. Let us align with your will. Jesus. Lord, we stand before you. Mm. We humble ourselves, O oh God. Pull the best out of us and make us more like you, mm. oh God, that we may stand like you, that we may speak like you. Let us know, oh God, that you come first in everything that we do. Amen. Lord, you are the first in our lives. Amen. We submit to your Lordship. We submit to the leadership of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Lead us, oh God. Rema soto keta reba soto. Let the world see you through us. Make us men and women of love that understand forgiveness, that embraces others. Give us a heart that know how to humble itself. We want to live in humility, O oh God. Lord, we pray. Mold us, O oh God. Make us, O oh Lord. And keep us faithful to the cause. Faithful to you. Your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm. And its righteousness. And the rest shall be added unto you. We want to seek the kingdom first. Yes. With what we have. With who we are. And what we can. We want to seek first the kingdom. Mm. We want to place you, O oh God, where you deserve to be. We want you to be in the throne of our lives. We want you to rule. Help us, O oh God. Mm. If you are here, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everyone pray in the Holy Ghost. Those who began to pray in the Holy Ghost yesterday, as you receive your baptism in the Holy Ghost, begin to pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Zatara babo Makata rekete Pray the Holy Ghost Baba baba sete Build yourself in God Build yourself in Him Rokoto sete rekete te 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 Yahweh Yahweh We love you Jesus Rakato soto Baba 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 sete kere bebe Yaka baba 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 seta Yaka ta sete rebebe sata Pray the Holy Ghost Yaka sete, yaka tarababa, zoto robo sata tata, yaka rata sete kere kete, garababa barebe sete, maya tarababa baba sete. Yoto soto robo zete Maya karabarabaraba soto Maya karabababa zete Masha taraka soto robo zete Maraka zata rakata
Machete reketata. Pose de bebe be. Yera babo zete. Zotorobosa Zetere Oyorobosetere Bebe Shetere Barabasa Jesus 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 Bless you, Lord. If you are seated or kneeling down, I want you to stand up if you can. Wherever you are, I want you to stand up. God is doing something in the church for all of us. He's building us brick by brick to a place of complete victory. Are we together? Amen. Now, I want to announce to you, the third service, meaning the service after here, is a prophetic service. And we'll pray for one another. We, we, we will tap into the glory of God as not seen before. I, I want to allow you to dissect in your spirit and digest the word of God. As a child of God, if you learn properly, you will get everything that God has said. But now I want you to take note of this. Next Sunday... The Lord had spoken to me when he asked me to minister this word. Next Sunday, we will have a service we never had so far in the church. It's a prophetic service, but it is a cleansing service. Now, you may be asking yourself, is this a cleansing ceremony? Some of you heard about cleansing ceremonies. This is a cleansing service. The Lord spoke to me and said, the reason why so many things are not manifesting is because the enemy has put too much on you. Many of us are carrying curses. We do not know where we got it from. You have loads on your shoulder that you do not know where you got it from. There are things thrown on you. And there are families like this, the Lord is saying, that have been uh, uh, locked because of the things that uh, came from generation to generation. And the Lord said, we should have a cleansing service. Now, when the Lord told me about that, I never thought about that. I, do not, I did not even know how to do a cleansing service. I never heard about that. And he taught me what we need to do. This service is not a service for one person. This is a service for the entire family. For the entire family. From here, you will begin to see that when you speak, Pray, you spread your wings, you can fly high. Yes, sir. You can run faster. 
Amen. Because you have no loads on you. I want you on Sunday, for Sunday, come with everyone in your father's house that you can bring, everyone in your mother's house that you can bring, come with everybody. Let us go through this cleansing service so that the word of God may manifest. We keep on throwing more and more, but there is a layer that had to be removed before you see the manifestation. Now, if you are far for your own good, come. It doesn't matter where you are. We have never, I have never in 16 years of AMI announced a cleansing service. Never. This is the first time I'm talking about a cleansing service. Miracles that will happen after you have been cleansed, you have never seen in your life. I will see it. Did you hear what I say? We will have which service? A cleansing service. Come ready. You will offload that cancer, that HIV, Amen. that sugar diabetes, Amen. that arthritis, Amen. that spirit of no progress, Amen. that near success syndrome that you always have. Amen. That almost life you always have, Amen. we will wash it away in, in the name, name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So begin to prepare yourself now. Prepare your family, prepare your loved one, unless you don't like them. If you don't like them, please don't bring them. Because after God will do what he will do, what will begin to manifest in their lives will be beyond your imagination. I receive it. Are you hearing me? Amen. You have a brother, even if he's a Muslim, he's not part of the church. Just tell him, no, 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 we're going to that church and then we'll, we'll leave after. Before we leave, God will deal with him. Thank you. Are Jesus. you hearing? If you have somebody who's sick, bring that person. Let's have that moment. It is a cleansing service. Your auntie is a sangoma. Bring her. I will unsangoma her. Glory to Jesus. I promise you, bring her. You will see how a man of God can unsangoma a sangoma. Are we together? Those of you who are remaining for the third service, begin to pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Something good will manifest. Now lift your hand as high as you can get. Begin to thank God for the word. Thank God for all that he has done. He has done what he has said. Give him glory. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Do that. He's a good God. Sharababo Sita. Raya basete, royo bo siendere bahaya, reba satara basante, ruko bo siande, reya basate. Father, we thank you. We thank you for you still speak today. We thank you, God, for your word. Father, for you are the word. We thank you, God, that no one is above you for you O oh god you regard your word higher than your name therefore your word is yes and amen thank you o god for the affirmation of your word today through your prophet the servant thank you O oh god that we have received the truth for lord there is nothing but the truth for you, O oh God, you are the truth, the way, and the life. Father, unless we come through you, will we not see the Father? Father, we honor your word. We have received your word. We have been rebuked by your word. We have accepted our faults. We have accepted our wrongs. Lord, we turn away 
O oh God, from every crookedness in us. For God, from today, we want to represent you. Father, not just when we're in your house, but Lord, when we're outside, let us represent you. Father, in whom we walk with outside, may, O oh God, we represent you. In what we speak, O oh God, may we represent you. In our daily routine, O oh God, may they not say this is a different person in your house and outside we do not know you. O oh God, today we have received your word. We cleave unto this word. For Lord, you are looking for those, O oh God, who will serve you in spirit and in truth. For this is the time of true worshipers. Thank you for our prophet. Thank you for a man who's not ashamed of the truth. Thank you for a man of God who's not ashamed of rebuking the children because of love. Thank you, God, for our prophet who speaks the oracles of the Lord. Father, undiluted, not to suit some and to suit others. But Lord, we have received the undiluted word of God. May, O oh God, we align. Help us to align. And Father, under the anointing of my spiritual father, I declare your children blessed. I bless your Monday. I bless your Tuesday. I said I bless your Tuesday. I bless your Wednesday. I bless your Thursday. I bless your Friday. I bless your Saturday and your Sunday. Go in the blessing and the favor of Almighty God. And as a man of God has said, next weekend is a cleansing Sunday. Come prepared. We love you and God bless you.